architectural artcast. With our modern, fancy, schmancy digital media, all the advances in CGI, green screen volume, and we can't forget AI, if you can imagine it, it can be created for our viewing pleasure. What is lost in the excitement of all this new technology? Something that people easily forget? Movies, motion pictures as we know them today, is a method of storytelling that has only existed for around 120 years, give or take. One of the genres that has maintained its popularity throughout the history of cinema has been horror. Fear as entertainment, that's as old as mankind. But there's always been one fundamental problem. There's a direct correlation between fear and danger. How much fear we experience is directly related to how much danger we are in. Yeah, after the fact, we might enjoy the adrenaline rush, the sense of accomplishment of escaping danger. But you had to experience danger in the first place. Intentionally exposing yourself to danger for the fun of it that can go sideways real fast. Traditional forms of storytelling, spoken word, plays, literature, all share the same fundamental problem. We as the audience have to do all the mental heavy lifting. We have to imagine fear. Basically, we frighten ourselves. Movie makers figured out early that motion pictures were unique because they could cause the audience to experience real fear. The science behind this phenomenon is fascinating. Well, to me, it's fascinating at any rate. Our conscious mind is telling us we're good, we're safe, no danger here. We're just sitting in a theater watching a movie. On the other hand, seeing and hearing dangerous things being portrayed on the screen causes the primitive parts of our brain to start screaming, danger, danger. Chemicals get dumped into our system and we experience real fear. Our conscious mind is constantly reassuring the system. No, 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 that's just happening up there on the screen. We're not in any real danger. This constant reassurance allows us to enjoy being afraid. One of the reasons why the universal monster movies of the 30s and 40s hold up until this day is because they were filmed in black and white. Most of our memories are in black and white. We dream in black and white. Our conscious mind automatically associates black and white imagery with the past, storytelling, fantasy. This allows our conscious mind to speak with even more authority when it tells the rest of the system, huh, no danger here. Another important element, black and white film records light or more importantly in this context, lack of light, shadows, fear of the dark. More importantly, fear of what might come crawling out of the dark is one of the most ancient primordial fears that we have. Black and white film, the film that records shadows, is perfect for scaring the bejesus out of us. The Universal Monster movies, they tapped into quite a few of our most ancient fears. The fear of death, the fear of somebody taking control of our minds and bodies, forcing us to do things against our will, the fear of being consumed by our most base animalistic instincts, just to name a few. There's a fine line between fear and funny. It's a well-known phenomenon that those who are afraid often laugh a lot. It's a coping mechanism. Human beings are the only creatures who laugh, and we really don't know why. One theory it's a pressure valve. Laughter releases tension. It allows us to regain psychological and emotional equilibrium. It helps us deal with and control our fear. Because of the complex relationship between fear and humor, there's always been a natural overlap between horror and comedy. The more frightened we are, the more willing we are to laugh at the funny bits. Now, to be clear, I'm not talking about a parody. For example, Young Frankenstein, as much as it's a loving tribute to the Universal Monster movies, its goal is not to frighten. It starts off spooky enough, but that's for world building and to set the mood. The movie very quickly reveals its real goal, to make you laugh. Put the candle 
back. I mean, at one point, we have the monster in top hat and tails singing and dancing. No, I'm talking about horror comedy, like Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. The movie portrays the three main monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, as scary and dangerous. They will do bad things to you if they can get their hands on you. Bella Lugosi's Dracula is not saying, blah, 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 blah. Lon Chaney Jr.'s Wolfman isn't doing pratfalls, and Glenn Strange's monster is definitely not singing and dancing. The monsters are all played straight, presented as serious threats. The humor comes from Abbott and Costello's antics and the situations everybody finds themselves in. A quick overview. Abbott and Costello are just two average Joes who happen to run a package delivery service. Costello's girlfriend is a gorgeous but mysterious woman who has, shall we say, ulterior motives in her interest in Costello. It had been a while since the last time I'd seen this movie. I'd forgotten what happened to the mysterious woman. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for y'all if you haven't seen it. Needless to say, she gets her just desserts, but woo, there is no way modern Hollywood would allow that to happen to a woman today, <laughs> which makes it even funnier. Along the way, Costello somehow picks up a second beautiful girlfriend who also has ulterior motives in her interest in Costello. Our two hapless chumps are hired to deliver two very large and very suspicious packages to a house of horrors. A peculiar guy named Talbot keeps trying to warn Abbott and Costello, don't deliver the packages, and whatever you do, don't open them. Of course, Talbot's warnings fall on deaf ears. The intrepid duo do indeed deliver the packages and open them. The contents of the packages disappear. Or shall we say, the bodies disappear. And hijinks ensue. Remember, this movie is a horror comedy. Scary and funny. I want to give you all two examples of how the humor comes directly from the horror. First example, the scene where Costello repeatedly kicks the wolfman in the butt. Now, we as the audience know that's the Wolfman. Costello has no clue. He thinks he's kicking Abbott in the butt. Would you all willingly, gleefully kick a werewolf in the butt? I know I wouldn't. Piss off a creature that's already pissed off? Way too dangerous. This is where the humor comes in. We know exactly what's going to happen when Costello figures out the little social faux pas he's just committed. And we're not disappointed. The second example, when Costello sits on the monster's lap. The monster is a reanimated corpse. Costello is sitting on the lap of a dead body, a zombie, a mummy. We know this is not going to end well. But here again lies the humor. We're waiting for Costello's reaction. And we are not disappointed. One more. I gotta do one more. Abbott and Costello are fleeing through the castle from the monster. They run into a room all in a panic. They shut the door. They put a bed in front of the door and they lean into the door, making sure the monster can't get in. They just made one little mistake. The door swings out, not in. The monster just simply opens the door, reaches in, starts grabbing. <laughs> It is believable that if you're in a state of fear and panic because you're being chased by a scary monster, you could make such an obvious mistake. The humor is produced as a direct result of the fear. Yeah, 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 Randy. There's only one problem with your argument. This movie isn't scary. Okay, kill joy, wet blanket. Let me tell you all how I saw the movie for the first time. Now, granted, I was around 10 years old, but it scared the bejesus out of me. It was 1030 at night, right around Halloween. Color 10 out of Springfield was going to play for their late movie, Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. 
My brothers, sisters, parents got our drinks, popcorn, got all settled around the TV, and then we turned off every single light in the house. Now, mind you, I lived on the edge of the National Forest. When our lights went off, there weren't lights for miles around. After the movie was over, the whole family went for a walk through the fields and the forest in the moonlight with no flashlights. At some point in the festivities, both my parents faded into the darkness and spent the rest of the evening making weird noises in the bushes all around us. By the end of the movie, all us kids were like, that's for babies. We're not scared. That's one of the reasons why we were so anxious to go on this walk, to prove to everybody, mostly ourselves, that we were adults. The further we got into the walk and the more weird noises we heard in the bushes, all those scary ideas that the movie had planted in our minds started to take root and grow. The shadows took on an ominous presence. Ancient primordial fears. All of us kids' nerves broke almost at the exact same moment. We turned around and hot-footed it back to the house as fast as our little legs could carry us. And those spooky sounds that were following us all the way home were mom and dad laughing their butts off. So, the next time you watch one of the Universal Monster movies, and that includes Abbott Costello meets Frankenstein, but any of the movies, the next time you watch one, afterwards, go take a walk through a dark forest, and then get back to me about fear. As is so often the case, the originals are the best. The Universal Monster movies are classic examples of horror films that tap into our ancient and primordial fears. Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein is a classic example of horror comedy, humor coming out of those ancient and primordial fears. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about, and until next time, y'all be safe. If you're all are still here, thank you very much. I appreciate it. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time, and maybe consider becoming a channel member.